That's how you fucking start a Friday right That's there. That's how you do it. That's right how you there, fucking do right it. There. Coming right off the backside of a good chorus. Yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. All Thought right. Thought it was going to go heavy. But it no. is Friday. <sighs> I feel like I just shit myself. The only thing that makes this day better is if I started golfing instead of going to work. <gasps> how was your day, by the way? Oh, I went <laughs> golfing. What golfing day? What do oh. you think? <laughs> right? Yeah, no, no, it's uh, it's our uh, weekly uh, podcast where we get together and talk shit. How you doing, friends? Yell at the dog sometimes. Yeah, the the, the silent third of our Friday Not table so chat silent here. Sometimes. <laughs> now we uh, get together to talk about our three favorite uh, subjects on planet Earth: meat, metal, and MMA. Episode the, uh, forty-five. Wow. 45. Oh, we're getting there. Yeah. We're getting we're there. It's, our, it's our Trumper episode. I know. We're, oh, fuck yeah. Oh, we're good now. <laughs> number 45. Next <laughs> week, number 46 will be dedicated to yours truly. Because <laughs> I, That's I right. will be the master oh, of the universe. Do we just, did we just have a fucking blockbuster <laughs> announcement here? <laughs> Robin's, Robin's Brahas 2020, motherfucker. Who would want that job? That's, that's the crazy. Especially thing. now after seeing the fucking hubble blue of all this other poor shit going on. Yeah. I, I just don't think I have the hypocrisy within me to be a president of the United States. Me neither. Uh, I, I, have, I mean, I, I do have a conscience. I just don't use it a whole lot, but it's there. Yeah. You know, I always get that. People like, well, you know, so what are your politics? Well, my politics are I hate everybody, and the two-party system is going to cause the death of this nation. That's right. That's my, that's my take. But We're all going to die. It doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's the start of the day. I um, got to go out and play some golf after uh, getting about a half inch of rain that over saturated soil. So you can imagine the um, uh, the green, the action on the greens was a little, little slow. Yeah. A little bit, a little bit. Cart paths were awesome. Or as I, I called them, the canals. Oh, <laughs> uh, did you get to ride in a fucking cart? No. I don't know why it no, sounded I, like fucking bubbles from TPB. <laughs> did yeah. you get a fucking cart? No, no. <laughs> Well, yeah, I, I mean, we did, but I didn't drive, so. Oh, bullshit. I, uh, I, I like to have plausible deniability is what I care <laughs> for. So, you know. <laughs> Were you the one driving this, sir? No. No, was I was me. as far away from this horrible situation as you could possibly imagine. It was weird, though, having to play golf sober because I did have to go back into work in the afternoon and do news and shit. So. Oh, that's a weird kind of fuck up to your kind flow of. of the day. A kind of. I would have way rather done news than went golfing and drank beer. Yeah. Yeah, because then, I mean, shit, we'd. We'd probably be half pissed already by now. Oh, yeah. No, there's no <laughs> doubt. There's, this maybe, might be a far more interesting podcast if it had come out that way. Probably the good folks listening, probably better for them. It didn't work out that way. So, uh, But nonetheless, though, uh, yeah, how's your week? <laughs> after, <laughs> after I ask you, after you take a shot of Crown. <laughs> so. God damn, dude. I don't know why I still had it in my head and I thought it was rye. Yeah. Because you can Whoa. shoot rye whiskey. Crown, <laughs> Crown's got uh, some of its own little... Uh, Intricacies to God, it. How do those people do it? Woo. I don't. Know. Um, it, it it was fine. It was a fine week. Uh, of course, you know the Las Vegas shit. Fucking just kind of ripped my soul out. That, but then followed by the Tom Petty. Yeah, news. that that was just uh, which, compound over compound. We're not we're not look, comparing I'm not being, the two. I'm not being an asshole. I'm not saying uh, Tom Petty was way worse than, than yeah. the Las Vegas massacre. But but I mean, when, but in reality though, one event brings you down, and then just something else kicks you while you're down. Right. You yeah, know? and uh, and that was kind of the case with the Tom Petty thing. That guy had influenced so many musicians, not necessarily me per se directly, but dude influenced musicians that influenced me. Fuck yeah, it, the know? trickle down effect. Yeah, so um, so and it was weird. A couple of weeks ago, I started watching the um, the Tom Petty documentary, uh, a four hour Netflix. documentary. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, running down a dream, which is and it's great. I, I think it's just south of four hours long, but. Um, it's still a hell of a long documentary. Yeah, but it's worth, the, it's worth the watch. Right. Now, a couple weeks ago, I started it. I went, nope, not good enough. It's a little slow starter. I need a little extra, a little kick in the kick in the pants to get me to watch something. You better yeah. you better really bring it. If it's a documentary, you better make it all that to start the thing. Especially on the precipice four hours long. You, you've got to reel me in and keep me there. I don't want to see a bunch of baby pictures and talking about somebody being brought up in Gainesville, Florida. That's going to just don't sound fun. But... The thing is, then, so then after he died on Monday, then, so Tuesday, yeah, I uh, turned it back on, watched about three hours, three three plus hours, and uh, got through the whole thing. And then it became very enjoyable. About midway through all the way to the end, fantastic. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it it, it carries more weight now that he's gone. Yeah. Which is still fucking weird to say. Yeah. You know? He did One week ago today, we could have had him on the show, you know? Fucking hell. No, not that he would have done this no. fucking show. We could have asked. 
<laughs> I mean, what's the worst you go to say? Just tell us to go fuck ourselves? Hey, Shit. Yeah, I mean, I went through that in high school. I'm, I'm fucking immune to it now. But it is interesting, though, the, uh, the various musicians, obviously, because he influenced so many, but, I mean, but people you wouldn't even think of. Uh, or, or people that he was a hero to, like yesterday, you and I uh, talked a little bit about it. Dave Grohl. Apparently, right. was such a just uh, he he was an acolyte <laughs> of you know of that genre of rock and roll. And then right. when they had asked him af- right after Nirvana, um, well, right after Kurt Cobain, right after Cobain he, shut down the band, he, he tried to gargle with Buckshot. Yeah, the uh, <laughs> and succeeded. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, that was right after that, and before he went on to do some stuff with the um, um, Queens of the Stone Age, and then before he yeah. founded Foo Fighters, Dave Grohl got asked to uh, step up because the uh, original drummer was out for some reason, and he did. He went right. on Saturday Night Live with Dude. Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, and there's no good audio that's really out there. I no, there's think. not. I mean, if you have, if you happen to have recorded that particular episode of SNL on a VHS tape, that might be the best quality audio you're gonna get. Probably, but it is, but it is great because man, when they start playing, uh, I think it was what, Honey, Honey Bee, I think, Honey Bee, yeah, yeah. Uh, Dave Grohl was really, uh, so shall we say, into it. It, it was like <laughs> it was p- picture Dave Grohl drumming "Smells Like Teen Spirit" in music video, <laughs> only doing a Tom Petty song that very same way. <laughs> it's just hair and mutton chops, dude. That's it. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, it's, it's, it's before he'd cut his his locks off so oh, uh it's it's a great video yeah, but you, you know wanna... dave Grohl looks weird with short hair like yeah. in that queens of stone age video we were watching for no one knows right he it, it just doesn't look right he's got to be rocking the main yeah i think so and uh, although now i guess he's kind of settled somewhere in between but yeah you know i but, think um, he's found that happy medium but yeah check it out bring up youtube and uh type in uh, tom petty snl dave Grohl. And, uh, and you got to do that because Tom Petty's played SNL multiple times. So. Yeah, yeah, you got to anyway, specify. Uh, but yeah, check it out. It's, it's actually the Honey Bee one. It's kind of a lark. So yeah, oh got it. I mean, it's just as entertaining musically as it is visually. Let's get into our uh, weekly segments. We always start with Mead. We don't have a whole lot to go with on this one. Uh, it's going to be another week before we get the long ship started, which is starting to get me a little nervous. I was wanting to have that done and ready before right. before yeah. Christmas. Now, which is highly possible. We can. Um, I mean, really, if we're looking to kind of put the screws to her, we can probably have her still ready by that first week of December. Because yeah. long ships really doesn't require a lot of racking because the uh, oak, the coil, and the peppercorn don't really put off a lot of, a lot of. There's you know, not a lot of trash. Trash, in there. yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm still good with that. The uh, you know because you're looking at about a th- you know three to four, four and a half week fermentation period, yeah. and then after that, that's all settling, aging, and flavoring, and then that's when we put in the uh, French oak, and then that's when things start kind of getting underway. Right. Um, so, uh, but the problem is they did not have the full quantity of the honey that we need and require, and people do freak out a little bit when you tell them what kind of the amount of honey that. You that you're looking for. Yeah, it's like, well, say, that's well, a lot to put on your bread. No, yeah, like, well, so how much how much honey do you need? <laughs> All of it. I need 15 <laughs> pounds at a minimum, yeah. preferably more like about 17 or 18, really. But, yeah. Um, and then that's when, you know, people kind of think, why do you want that much? Because you know, we're making we, drugs. And we, <laughs> a, a drug, really. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, true. true. Um, but, you know, and then we've got local beekeepers around, uh, around the Portales Valley. But I I can't do that shit, and I'm not going to bad mouth them because they're okay. Able to I sell, will. They're able to sell <laughs> their honey for what they're doing because the average person doesn't know. They'll see a small raw, vial of honey, but raw it'll say, honey. It's it'll, raw, but it's local. Yeah, I'll local, pay raw honey, unpasteurized. You know, I mean, if you know, and they'll say, "Wow, okay, yeah, let me give you twenty dollars for that." What is that exactly? Oh, it's a half a pint. <sighs> well, yeah, but I get I go and ask. I say. How many pounds do you have? And they, they they look at you like you're some kind of an asshole, you know. And like, oh, you don't want you're going to buy pounds of my honey at the exorbitant price I have for it. Well, that's the whole thing. It's like, well, I don't measure mine by weight. Well, I'm sorry, but that's what you're supposed to do. If you have an apiary, you're supposed that's that's the codified acceptable means of yeah. selling honey is by weight, not by volume, because you could be adding water. You know, well, and, fuck yeah. You know, and it's or really whatever. diluting that shit, yeah, or you know, or molasses, some dirt cheap. You know, and right. You know, I mean, you're you're an asshole if you turns in that honey substitute shit you can buy at the local five and dimer down here. Well, yeah, you know, like the little the little bears are a dollar. Yeah, so you're not that the little tiny one. You're not you're not getting real honey. I'm folks. Sorry. If you ever had the little bear honey as a child, guess what? You weren't really having honey. That was sugar water with a little bit of corn syrup <laughs> in it. Really, 
That's and that's why they're cheap. You know, I mean, yeah. and really, if you're buying real honey, you're paying a real price, man. But but I'm not going to pay the local price. Fuck no. Yeah, I, I'm, I might have to just pay the iron price. <laughs> Game of Thrones <laughs> reference. I like it. Yeah, working it. I'm. You know, I mean, the other option would be if we look into going ahead and putting in a hive. And but then we're then we become you yeah. know run you know then we become folks, the assholes folks running an apiary only yeah. we ain't gonna be selling it. How would you like a half a pint of honey for thirty dollars, sir? Well, we'll <laughs> actually be giving you seven hundred and fifty milliliters of of a decent drink. Yeah. you're getting more out of the honey from us anyway. Right. Compared to what you're buying from these local people. That's a fact. That's a fact. Yeah, fuck them. I don't care. You know, something else we would <laughs> talked about at some point, and I'm still okay with trying, but I don't want to do it a straight, and that, well, it has to do with a coffee batch. Yeah. I don't want to do a straight coffee bean batch because, number one, it's going to have a trash like crazy. Oh, fuck yeah. When the Absolutely. alcohol, you know, starts to break that. It doesn't even require alcohol to start breaking down a coffee bean. You could do that in water. Yeah. You know, so... So it's going to have trash like crazy. And on top of that, and uh, one meadery that I had visited last year, they had one. I thought it was fine, but I knew exactly what it, it you was. You knew it what was, was wrong with it, Yeah, too. Uh, it was too much coffee. Yeah. Um, I actually think something really weird, like coffee. Do you think they do the coffee bean, or they actually brew the fucking coffee and add it to the batch? Yeah, was really it kind of like a darker? Yeah, yeah, very really, much so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was dark. I mean, it was like black strap you know, almost. Wow, you know, but um, I almost wouldn't mind trying something to offset, which would be then something either really sweet or something that's just got its own wang on its own, like a, like an herbal component, maybe. Yeah. Like uh, I'm almost thinking like rosemary and coffee, which is huh. we know rosemary has got a real strong rosemary's got a punch to her. Yeah. So, but so does coffee. So you'd have yeah. to have something that can hold its own. I don't know. I mean, I'll I'm going to probably keep going back to the drawing board because yeah, that's, that's not even going to be a next batch. That's a 2018. And that'll best. probably be something that we run a little gallon test batch on. We'd have to. Oh yeah. my god. There's, There's just so no many way. variables there that we have no idea about. Yeah. No, we'd have to do it that way and then mock it up if we have something we like, you know. Yeah. I mean, even even maybe to the point of a uh, cinnamon, rosemary, and coffee—three things that don't go together. Wow! But might pull it all into one thing that might make it very savory. That is kind of interesting, though. Yeah. That I mean, like like runestone kind of started out that same way. It's right. Like you know, that, this is not really a booze flavor I would think of, but it might work, and it, and I think it did work. Right. You know? Oh, no. Runestone's very drinkable. I mean, yeah. we got to get back to that, but we have a fight night tomorrow, so more on that later. Mm, that's but, right. Um, but, yeah, we'll uh, break that back out because we wanted to kind of give her a test. And Yeah. Because it's been a li- it's kind of been sitting around for a while, and we got two. We have no bottles left of Runestone. None? Well, we have two left. But oh, yeah. When we get down to two, I like to say we have none left. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, we, we, and, well, we're withholding two anyway because uh, we do have uh, some friends that are supporting our cause that wanted us to reserve Indeed. two bottles so and we have we're honorable people here which is uh which is why you decided to go ahead and put a whole bunch of green chili mead down the boiler last night oh so. dude and it's i think a quarter of that bottle still down there oh right <laughs> well, yeah it stays well with it, i'd had chinese food previous so it was sitting on a whole bunch of general so's and and just some gnarly mongolian beef and really, it paired nicely with leftover Chinese food. Yeah. Because that's elegance, motherfucker. Yeah, that's elegance. It. Yeah, it's the word of class <laughs> from our very own Brandon. Yeah. I like to drink a high, high-tier high $30 honey wine with my Chinese food that it left over from the day before. <laughs> <laughs> got anything left for mead? Uh, I mean, we've got a lot what of... what I got uh, left in my gut, that's about it. We've got a lot of green man left. Uh, so if that's, uh, if that's your trick, then we've... Uh, We've certainly got uh, yeah. the that that heat's starting to come down a little bit. Well, I noticed uh, it. Yeah, yeah, it, it, and it will. Over no, that's time, good. That's so. good because it, it, it's kind of it'll burn your insides. Yeah, out. Uh, a buddy of mine that had donated to the cause, he tried and he's like, dude, I, I mean, it tasted great, but I just I couldn't drink it. I was like, why the fuck not? <laughs> it was just too hot. <laughs> It's like I'm drinking fire, man. I'm like, well, that's because you're a pussy. Okay, <laughs> just just tuck it in, get it up, drink that shit. Yeah, that's uh, it, it. It yeah, the green green man is one of the few that I really kind of throw out there and say, hey, we've got to um, you, you got to make sure you give it a, a slight bit of age. You've got to let it. You got to let that shit mingle for a while, for sure. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you're if you're some kind of 
fucking Viking like Brandon is, and, <laughs> and, and your and your trick is that that's what you're wanting to do is to suck down a whole lot of uh, green chili, fresh green chili, new mead. Yeah, by all means, go ahead. Well, really, because that youthful alcohol, that young alcohol taste, you know. I mean, I'm pretty familiar with it now, and can suss it out in a, right. in a drink, but. That green chili mead, man, that green chili, the smokiness, the heat, the flavor, it it covers it up. Right. You don't even fucking notice it. Well, until you know, the next day when you're on the fucking john. That's kind of about right. Yeah. So. But it's a price I'm willing to pay. <laughs> all right. That's good enough for the mead side of it all. Let's get into the uh, metal portion of the f- podcast here as we uh, highlight some of the uh, good releases for the week or talk about newsworthy events and things going on, which... Actually, we can combine a bunch of it into Marilyn Manson. Oh, God, that fucking moron. He's got uh, Heaven Upside Down as his new release today. I don't care. I haven't listened to a lick of it, nor do I plan to. But I think it is important to note that basically, um, well, he he got attacked by his own set. (laughs) No, he attacked his set, and the set fucking defended itself. (laughs) Yeah, some kind of big prop, which, you know. Yeah, it was like two huge guns on like a trussle or something. Yeah, kind of came down, uh, collapsed on him. And uh, and it looked pretty fucking heavy, really did. Yeah. It looked like some fucking steel work going on there. And uh, what, he's like 50 years old now or something like that? Yeah. Oh, God, it's terrible. I mean, it, it's right up there with Brett Michaels going face first into that fucking, st- <laughs> that fucking stage thing coming down. There's definitely going to be one that uh, yeah, you're going to want to check that one out because uh, there's there's plenty of video on it. It is, and it is really maybe one of the funnier things, and uh, you'd kind of discuss yeah. this before we kind of jumped on. Is kind of the resulting shit that takes place after a collapse. Yeah, on. because I mean, you know, there's every chance he probably, he, I'm sure he got hurt pretty good. Had to. It's not. I mean, it doesn't look like he drinks his milk in the day. I, he's probably got legs like Anderson Silva, shattered like a twig. Yeah. But when it when initially happened, of course, crew were all over there. Right. Like, like, oh, fuck, he's probably dead. Let's let's see if we can save his life. <laughs> and then his uh, fucking girlfriend comes over. It's like, oh, sweetie, my, my sweetie, my Brian Warner, are you all right? And he just fucking just slaps her away. Like, get the fuck out of here, bitch. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Which I kind of understand because I think the last thing a guy like Marilyn Manson with the image he wants to up- uh, uphold, yeah. the last thing he'd want is his doting girlfriend, <laughs> like, just crying over his limp carcass. It's okay to be emo, but it's not okay to receive favors or, no. or sweet nums from your from your lady. <laughs> sweet nothings after being crushed by two <laughs> fucking pistols. <laughs> oh, so dumb. Other stuff going on today. Uh, a really good find that you're going to want to check out. And these guys are on Bandcamp. I, I mean, it, it came as a complete surprise to me because I w- wasn't aware of their initial EP and full album that they'd had. But today they released a new one. It is uh, Spirit Adrift, Curse of Conception. Dig. Yeah, that, that's who actually kind of walked us into the podcast. Um, Curse of Conception, that is their new one. Uh, it's eight tracks, but it's on Bandcamp, so it's $7.77. You're paying less than a dollar a track. Yeah, that, and that's not bad. And, and Bandcamp is a great way to support a band that you can't like go to Walmart or whatever record store might still exist at this time. Well, the nice thing about Bandcamp is because the band gets like 90, 90-something percent. Yeah, the Bandcamp I mean, gets a very small bite. Yeah, it's like maybe they might and take you can five also, or six, you can also do merch on there, you know? They have the whole suite for you, and they don't want half of your shit. Yeah, no, it's, it's they're the very ideal, limited. They're the ideal like storefront for indie bands. And Spirit Adrift is one that you probably want to check out and get behind. If you enjoy our metal portion of the podcast or what we talk about and you, you hear us throwing things out and you check it out on your own, you go, you know what? These guys are right, which hey, you never know. Um, well, we know we're right. <laughs> but uh, Spirit Adrift is one you're going to want to check out. For and, sure. Um, uh, they've only got like uh, two videos up on YouTube for you to, uh, to kind of uh, taste test with. But, that, but, but that's enough. It, yeah. really, it is enough for me to plop down money for that shit. Yeah, you know, I mean, and you could tell the direct influences on these guys. Black Sabbath, obviously. Metallica, obviously. Um, you can also throw in uh, Paul Bear. For sure. Yeah. I mean, but great they're harmonies, band- Great harmonies. Great harmonies. Uh, great guitar harmonies as well, you know? Yeah. The uh, front man, he was a former front man for uh, Gate Creeper. So do check that out. Um, again, and this is their, band s- this is their second album, This right? is their second full-length yeah. album. They did have an EP. But, yeah, a little band out of uh, Phoenix 
which is great news for you and I here in the uh, greater southwest is because I think the chances of catching them in Albuquerque are probably pretty good. Fuck yeah, unless they're those dicks. It's like, you know, we're just going <laughs> to circumvent uh, New Mexico altogether. We'll play Gallup, and then we're <laughs> headed north, motherfuckers. <laughs> That's always – Gallup and Farmington always get the gr- the great metal show. Well, that is the cutoff from Phoenix to Denver is to come through it, there. Yeah. So, yeah. so, I mean, shit, if I ever fucking relocate another place in Mexico, I might, I might move my ass to Farmington just for the – Concert scene alone. Yeah, not bad. Certainly not for the uh, local flair, but... Other new releases today. Dreadnought, I would love to tell you I've checked out their shit. I like Dreadnought. They they haven't put out anything on YouTube that yeah. I can pre, you know, preview. So, But yeah, their new one is uh, Awake and Sacred Waves. Check that out. August Burns Red put out a Phantom Anthem today. I and, love that name. And my, uh, my notes here, I have uh, an asterisk that says, Nope. Oh, that's right, because August Burns Red decided years ago, look, I'm not going to go out and listen to uh, some band that, that their, only, their only shtick is that they play devil music or something. Yeah. I'm also not going to go out and go the other direction. Call me unaffiliated, but <laughs> August Burns Red has become a very uh, pseudo-Christian metal yeah. band. Um, Which is fine. It's, it's fine. It's just, you know, whatever. But it is weird to me to hear like because they get they can tend to get a little bit heavy, and so hearing brutal lyrics yeah. <laughs> for Christian music seems like an odd. Uh, it's an odd value. It, yeah, it's an odd pairing to say the very least. But uh, you know, keep doing you, August Burns Red, and you know, and, and that's fine. And we'll keep you know doing what we do here. Here's one that is funny though, and that is if you uh, if you harken back to the days of yore that you miss glam rock. Well, guess what? It's still alive and well. <laughs> Autograph put out a record today that's called Get Off Your Ass. I'm assuming they mean climb down off your mule. Or I, I, was, I was hoping that the, song, that the album title would continue saying Get Off Your Ass and Rock. Well, maybe that's implied. That's, uh, <laughs> but, but nonetheless, glam rock is still alive and well. Autograph. Uh, there you go. Yeah, we're, uh, uh, we'll give it. We'll give it nothing. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let we'll, we'll call that homework. We'll let, let the you faith, figure yeah, it out. We'll let y'all decide. You you form our opinion for us because we refuse to take the time. It's just but like, yeah. oh, new Volbeat album coming out. Well, that can go fuck itself. <laughs> but yeah, definitely though, out of everything this week, we did we, we we've been really fortunate here lately, and I really like the way that twenty seventeen is shaping up toward the end because every week there's something good. Absolutely. Spirit adrift. Curse of Conception, do that. Pair it with a fine, uh, a fine Paul Bear album right after. Make a fucking mix out of it. Yeah, because those are two, those are two bands well, that need to go on tour together. And and check out their uh, their first one, um, be, uh, behind and be uh, and beyond. I think is the yeah. name of it. Um, that that well, that's the EP. But yeah, but it's all off of um, you know. The, the check out all, all their stuff. They they have the first the full first album on YouTube. You can. You check that out on your own, but but definitely do support. I mean, yeah, probably, I'm going to probably get on Bandcamp here a little bit, drop seven bucks, and I'm going to get a really great album that I'm going to play over and over again. And then I'm going to take it from Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I might, you, I might can give you, uh, him enable your Bluetooth. Why? I don't know. Don't ask why. I just need you to enable your Bluetooth. <laughs> What's your password, man? <laughs> hey, I got a uh, I got a Jeopardy question for you, mm. or a Jeopardy answer, I guess. Oh, okay. See if you can give me the question. See if I can be the Keith Jennings of this generation. The big four bands of thrash metal are Metallica, Anthrax, Megadeth, and this quartet with a murderous name. Megadeth, Metallica, who? Anthrax. Anthrax. And this band with a murderous name. Well, Sepultura is not murderous, but I'll no, put no. them in there. No, they're talking about the big four. The big four? I feel like I'm missing something here. Well, you got Metallica, you got Anthrax, you got Megadeth, and yeah. you got the last one. Well, you'd be losing some money on Jeopardy. Yeah, I would. Well, the answer is, well, the question is, who is Slayer? Oh, okay. Uh, the reason I bring this up is because that was actually on Jeopardy as a question. Really? Yeah. Well, see, my problem is, because uh, Slayer is not really terribly active, right? Fuck yeah, they just put Are out they? a new album like a couple months ago. Repentless? I'm just not a huge fan. But anyway, I, I, right, No, okay. I agree. I think Slayer has run its course. Yeah, I thought that, they ran their course back in 88, 89, but yeah. They, they've hit the point where if they were to end it on this last album, Repentless, because it's pretty good, but... It sounds to me like Tom Mariah and Carrie King are not the best of buddies right now. I really, 
my problem is I really kind of second tiered those guys. I really did. Yeah. I don't put them in the same conversation with Metallica and Megadeth at all. Uh, as far well, as far as like thrash metal originators, that's uh, that's about it. No. Musical stylings though, absolutely not. No. No, I mean uh, definitely definitely some pioneers. Yeah. And and what, you know, kind of evolved in the shit we're listening to now. Right. But uh, like I said, I think they're my my opinion, their relevancy stopped in 1990, yeah. right around there. 80s Slayer was the best Slayer. Yeah. And then they just got older, and it, it really changed everything. But yeah, you know, fucking uh, pretty good metal, thrash metal question on Jeopardy. I'd love to hear Trebek say that. Oh, yeah, well, I'm sure he had his normal I hope no one uh, knew it, and, and Trebek had to go, uh, the uh, question is, what is Slayer? I don't know. They've had this uh, this guy on all week. That kind of looks a little bit like Dan Bilzerian. <laughs> oh, and, uh, really? <laughs> yeah. And but he but he's kicking everybody's ass. He's won like seven seven in a row now. Yeah. But and it's not even because he knows anything. They'd actually had an interview with him. And the guy said no. He said all I do. He said I sit back and I watch reruns of Jeopardy all the time. And after a while, you can start to see a pattern emerge. Well, kind of like where, kind of like that dude that cheated on Pressure Luck. Well, yeah, but I mean, this isn't cheating, though. Well, no, it's not cheating. You're doing your homework. I mean, it is. It is kind of the Vegas equivalent of counting cards, but, um, but, but not even maybe that because, like I said, he does. He spots that there is a, a, a recurring pattern. So, you know, if it's going to be on some kind of a, somebody out of a certain era, oh, the answer Chopin, you know, and, yeah, or whatever. I mean, because it almost always is that way, you know, or this sounds in, like this uh, impressionist, blah 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 blah. Oh, well, that's Rembrandt, you know, or whatever. Sounds like Jeopardy needs some new answer writers. That's yeah. I was like, wow, are you guys using the same bank? Because like we got <laughs> we got like uh, fifteen twenty thousand questions. Got a I tank full of manatees with with balls with words on them. That's how we write our shit now. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, no, yeah. dudes are doing really well. Won like seven or eight in a row. Probably probably if my lucky probably lost today. But um, drummer Mastodon put out his top eight Mastodon albums. This oh, is man. no. This is kind of it, this is actually really interesting. Okay. Usually um, this is horrible. Yeah, no. He uh, he it, like in his mind what he thinks are the band's best albums. Okay. Ever San out of the 8 albums that they put out. Call the Mastodon is kind of like a compilation. So yeah. it's not really an album, uh but that's at the very bottom. It's like it's like having a greatest hits, right? Yeah, that's your number 8. Number 7 is The Hunter out of 2011. And uh it was like one of their biggest releases, but it's one of his least favorites because it was such a hard album, right? Because apparently Mastodon goes through a lot of problems personally and then they come out and write this moody fucking album apparently that was the case with the hunter i've never listened to it the hunter um that I was might actually have, that's I'm, probably the first mastodon album i listened to. oh uh number six remission their first album uh number five once more around the sun okay 2014 that was uh that was a big release for him yeah but again it was that mastodon that was just like this is just not doing it for me right. it's, a, it's a i'm sure it's great but it's just not what i want yeah number four emperor of sand now that ran, that ranks really high. Now the other thing too is, you could ask the same guy ten years from now, and his list is not probably going to have Emperor Sand, you know. Yeah, and I would think, yeah, I think it's going to get bumped out a little bit. Uh, Blood Mountain at number three, which has a, uh, which is basically almost like a Moby Dick concept album. Okay. Uh, which is my favorite Mastodon album is Blood Mountain. Okay. Uh, Leviathan coming at number two, and Crack the Sky is his favorite album that they've done. That one, well, it doesn't surprise me. That was when the, that's when it began. That was when the change began. It wasn't like the full thing that we heard on uh, Once More Around the Sun. Right. Crack the Sky was kind of like that weird intro to it, and then they put out the Hunter. It, but they got they got more popular after Crack the Sky, so I can't hate on it too much as far as them getting a little more fucking a little something, a little something, something on the back end there. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, and I get it. Crack the Sky, actually, probably people that are fans of Mastodon, that is their favorite album. So it is interesting that there's uh, there's some um, um, a little bit of agreement there across the spectrum of fans to uh, the folks playing. Yeah, I mean, it, like I said, Blood Mountain's my favorite, but I think it's a pretty pretty solid uh, solid thing. And on another note, Mastodon's uh, guitar player, uh, Bill Keller, Kelleher, there it is. Yeah. Apparently, uh, he was talking a lot of mad shit about Gibson, Gibson guitars. Well, yeah. <sighs> well, okay. So, what's his beef then? Uh, here's here's what he says. I'm not going to read the whole write up, but there this first couple sentences, 
I think explains it beautifully. I never really felt like I was accepted at Gibson. The communication over there is terrible. They kept fucking up my guitars that I was asking for. I didn't ask for a lot. I just had a few certain things that I would like with my guitar. I told them I didn't want it chambered, and they made my second guitar chambered. All the guys I worked with over there, the A&R guys, were getting fired left and right, and the company just seemed to be falling apart to me. There were new guys who would come in, and they didn't know shit. Well, but yeah. his new his new brand is ESP. Which yeah, can't argue with that. Man, well, here's the whole thing too, and I'm I don't know what's going on at Gibson. I really don't. I own a Gibson. I'm a Gibson guy, hundred percent. Right. But the problem that Gibson has got is that they're still operating on this um, this paradigm of um, th- that they're still the the end all be all. Um, for uh, tour- for touring artists, for uh, you know, for your rock and roller, you know, I mean, for me, man, that's what Dwayne Allman played, you know. So I mean, that's where I'm at. Well, the problem is that your average musician is d- isn't starting with a pile of goddamn money in their bank account, right? You know, they're they're probably starting out with their like dad's guitar. I'm yeah, you know, I mean, more times than not, well, we do have a lot of spoiled kids in this society, but Church. and if you're but if you're going to be playing metal, hey man. Why? Why are you worried about a you know a two thousand dollar guitar or whatever the case might be? Why are you worried about all that nonsense when you can go out and get a Jackson for three four hundred dollars, or a Squire, you know, yeah. or whatever, you know? Oh, as we spontaneously have music just We're kick back. up. <laughs> that's all right. I, that's actually all right. Uh, but but yeah, I mean that's that's kind of where that one is at is that. You have to have deep pockets to get in the game. Right. You really do. Well, Gibson has made it almost exclusionary for a new artist, uh, you know, a new musician to be able to get into the fold. You know, there, there is nothing out there. Look, and they'll tell you, oh, hey, we do have a cheap line. And that cheap line is, um, uh, uh, God damn it, it's. Oh, fuck. Ah. Um, a, 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 well, now I sound like an idiot. Because, but, but, but. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but they, uh, man, it's not even just coming to me. I've been up to, for too long. But um, it's been a prob- tough day, folks. Yeah. Well, the problem is, so they've got their B model line, uh, uh, Epiphone. That's who it is. Epiphone. Um, yeah. yeah. Fucking hell. Yeah. But the, uh, but yeah. So they've got the Epiphone line. That's fine. But that's still not a Gibson Les Paul. Right. And it never will be. No, absolutely not. A Gibson Les Paul is going to cost you if you're going to studio version like mine is. The cheapest you're going to get out of this game is twelve hundred bucks. And then, then you have to go out and get an amp, you know. And I mean, if you're going to get something good, and if you want to be an old rocker like I am, then you're going to be looking Marshall, and then you're dropping eight hundred bucks yeah. to twelve hundred dollars if you're looking for a stack, you right. know, a half stack. But you know, which which is another weird one here. By the way, uh, you got to look into the Marshall Code series. Marshall Code series. I'm not saying buy the Marshall Code series, but look into it. Okay. Technology has gotten, you know me, I, if it's got very few knobs and just gets really loud and I can distort the shit out of it, I'm happy. Well, that's really all you need. Yeah. The Code Series has got, got, got like hundreds of presets. Oh, for fuck's sake. Really? But, but your presets are all, hey, guess what, over your smartphone or oh, other interface. Oh, no. Yes. No. Yeah. Now, you don't, you don't have to. Right. <clears throat> they, they, you Does can't, it have Bluetooth? Just fucking sounds like it should, or Wi-Fi or something. It, it I, th- I think it is Bluetooth, actually. Yeah. Oh, fucking hell. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, that I was, is crazy. I was watching some reviews on. It, I was like, you know, if it t- if it gets to the point where I got to whip my phone out in order to get my tone right, I'm out. I'm out. That's I'm it. That's, go ahead and set me up with something cheap. Oh man, that is <laughs> fucking. That's kind of stupid. I mean, you know, you got all the power. You don't need to add this shit. It's just trying to tack more bucks onto what's already a pretty pricey goddamn amplifier. Yeah. Well, and I mean, my problem is, though, and, and really kind of bringing it all together, Marshall's not cheap, but I understand why it's not yeah. cheap. There's a reason. You are buying a name, but by God, you're buying the ability to push a lot of air. Yeah. And that's what they've always done well. I'm really, I, I, I'm, I'm a Gibson guy, but man, I, I get it when people say, look, they're not taking care of me. I don't know where this company is going. And right, as far as endorsements, because I mean they fucking endorse everybody. Yeah, you know, you know they even endorse Hetfield until he apparently told him to fuck off and went ESP as well. Yeah, I mean, really, if I had to go a different direction other than Gibson, man, I I might back into the Fender boat. I don't know, but yeah, but probably ESP or maybe I'd go something really weird like Guild or somebody. Right, you know? 
Oh, well, fucking Guild Acoustics are really nice. I know yeah, they're uh, their electrics are coming along though. They man, they didn't used to be, but they're really kind of getting there now. Oh, but, nice. You know, but I mean, yeah, go with something. I mean, I, I would never play an Ibanez or a Jackson or Charvel because that's not my playing style. I'm not a shredder. Right. You know? I mean, and as much as I think a lot of uh, uh, Schecters are beautiful guitars, I, I'm just not that guy. I don't need seven strings. You know. Yeah. Oh man! All right, I'm sorry. I, I that's kinda, all, no, that's all I right. I'm taking up the entire. That's okay. Portion. This is it, it is something that we that you know a bit about. Yeah. You know, uh, born on this day, John Cougar Mellencamp, 1951. I'm born a small town. <laughs> it, he's he's so borderline Bruce Springsteen song style. He's, I, he's the Indiana Bruce yeah. Springsteen. Oh he fucking is. hell! Yeah. Uh, see, Simon Cal, born today in 1959. He's not. He's a Fucking he's, executive he's an, he's an, cocksucker. He's an asshole, but hey. Uh, born 1968, Tom York, front man of Radiohead. Oh, yeah. And uh, that, did you, I was never, I never went down that well too deeply. Um, they have they have some shining moments. Oh, yeah. They no, do. No, no, I no. mean, but you have to sift through a lot of weirdness to get to it. Yeah. <laughs> That's his problem. Uh, and uh, fucking Taylor Hicks, that prematurely gray cocksucker from uh, American Idol, born 1976. Oh, he was the... Uh, he was like the American Idol winner no one remembers. Yeah, yeah. He uh, <laughs> he looked like Guy Fieri, right? Uh, kind Guy, of? Yeah. Yeah, but a little maybe bit. Maybe a little less spiky hair, but uh, did all the Ford commercials, yeah? Yeah. Uh, fuck, I don't know if he did any Ford commercials. Yeah. Because I, I know so. he was like... in Because uh, he's born in 76, but when he's 30, he already had, he was already gray-headed. Yeah. So he had that fucking prematurely gray problem. That's the only reason I remember him. Yeah. He had, he had, like, real bluesy kind of sing, singing style. See, that's that was the indication that American Idol needed to go away. I mean, yeah, they had the Kelly Clarkson, had, uh, uh, shit, who's the big, fat, black guy that did uh, really, Stuttered. really well? Yeah. Stoddard. Yeah, Ruben Stoddard. And then Taylor Hicks. And then after that, it's hard. It, yeah, you know, I mean, after Didn't that. Didn't Carrie Underwood win that shit? Didn't, did she? Yeah, I think she did. Yeah. She's probably the one that's doing the best. Yeah. Yeah, well. I mean, hell, she opens up Sunday Night Football for crying out loud. Right, I mean, I would have made terrible. Yeah, let's get rid of Hank Williams Jr. for Monday Night Football. And let's move Monday Night Football to Sunday Night. Oh, God damn it! It's weird. They, I thought they were going to bring him back. They have not. I don't, I don't know. I don't watch a lick of football. I've not watched a, a full NFL game from start to finish probably in seven years. I watch Red Zone, so I don't have to. No, that's. It's like we just we just take you to the games where good shit's about to happen. I'm like, oh, that's wonderful. Yes, right. yes, I'll pay six dollars for that. Yeah. Well, there's worse ways to spend six bucks. But, Damn right. Yeah. Crack. <laughs> 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 MMA, my friend. Now, MMA. This is, uh, God dang, we've been going for a while. I know. This, um, this might be a record. This might be the longest one we've done um, ever, maybe. Because UFC, UFC 216, pretty stacked card. Um the main card is held together. We've had the weigh-ins. Actually, I'm pretty sure the official weigh-ins have just wrapped up. Um, well, technically, they did lose one fight, and that's the Paige Van Zant jessica I fight. And they but, did lose uh, Nick Lentz and uh, Will Brooks due to Nick Lentz not being able to make weight. So the problem I had with that, I want to see Will Brooks on a, on, on a, on a bounce-back fight. Yeah, he has not had a good run of it. it, it, it His just, first fight, he came in, dominated, did the whole little Pokemon you know, thing, you know, which was hilarious. Right. Sure. And then, and then proceeded to get his ass oh, kicked. Oh, no, no. That wasn't Will Brooks. The uh, the one that caved in Cyborg's skull, that was uh, Michael Van Page. Oh. Yeah, the one where he fucking caved in his head with a knee. Wow. So yeah, that Will guy's Brooks? still fighting a belt. Will Brooks used to be the uh, the lightweight champ there. Uh, and he's lo- so he's lost both of his fights then? Uh, in his, his UFC tenure... He uh, he beat Ross Pearson, right? wasn't able to finish Every, him. Everybody does, but I mean, yeah. even Diego Sanchez beat Ross. And Pearson. then uh, he lost that fight against Alex Oliveira, where Oliveira came in six and oh. a half pounds overweight, and, and then talked shit after the yeah. win. Right, knocked him out in the, in the third round, late in the round, yeah. and then talked shit. And then uh, he got subbed by Oliveira, Charles Oliveira. Apparently, he, he they just want to fucking set him up with Oliveira fights. All well, these Brazilians. Uh, yeah. But yeah, two ten, he got subbed there. So it's not been a great. He was eighteen and one. I mean, yeah. now he's he's rocking a nineteen and three record, and we're not going to get him to see him fight tomorrow because Nick Lentz can't make weight. Uh, yeah, not good. Uh, have you heard the rumblings, and that is pun intended, of Anthony Rumble Johnson wanting to come back and fight a heavyweight? Anthony Rumble Johnson, if you follow him on Twitter, 
every time there's a fight and it's a good fight, he will tweet out, man, this is why I need to, I wish I could come back or whatever. Or this is, uh, this is the kind of stuff that makes me want to wish, wish I was back in the octagon again, whatever. But it's after a good fight, like right. a great fight. Yeah. Yeah, then he gets inspired. But then, hey, I don't, I don't see him doing that when it's like a real snooze fest of a grappling contest. Right. Yeah, he goes in and knocks out Glover in under a minute, I think, in the first round. Knocks him out. Yeah. And he looks like a beast. He is a beast. But that rumble that showed up, that second Cormier fight, that wasn't the rumble we've always seen. I, I think if he's fighting anybody but, Rum, uh, but Cormier, if Rumble's fighting anybody but Cormier, he's going to probably destroy him. But the problem is he has it in his head. He can't beat Daniel Cormier. And, yeah. and, he, got, and, he, gets, and he gets stupid when he, when he fights Cormier. I, I, I say if he comes back, never let him get another title shot, but he'll be a fun guy to watch. Especially fighting at heavyweight. Oh, oh, he'd move yeah, all the way up. he'd move up to heavyweight. Man, that guy, uh, and if he doesn't have to worry about a weight cut, Jesus. That's a, that's a scary thought. That guy's but scary at 205, let alone. The thing is, I just don't know if he has it in his heart anymore. I mean, he's selling dope. He's doing good. Yeah, well, okay, yeah, he got into the uh, cannabinoid business in California. Yep. Yeah. Uh, uh, Low Kick put out a uh, top 10 worst champions in the UFC ever. Worst champ now based on what personality or just not uh, being a good how champ? How successful they were, how successful they were as a champion. I'd say Holly Holm right at the top somewhere. <laughs> uh, Holly Holm actually opens the list. Yeah, <laughs> followed by C. Uh, C? <laughs> followed by Josh Barnett. Oh wow, that that's see Josh is like an ancient guy though. I mean, I I kind of respect him in a lot of ways. Yeah, so. sure. Uh, followed up by Vitor. Well, yeah, but Vitor had a lot of defenses, didn't he? Uh, he no, no. Shogun, I think uh, that was it. He got it, and then uh, he Shogun won it took and it then, away, and Shogun took it away. Oh my God! Okay, oh, well, no, take it back. Uh, uh, he lost it to Couture after uh, he he beat he beat Randy Couture for it when Couture was fighting at light heavyweight, and then uh, Couture got it back, and he hadn't been back yet. Was that like a, around like UFC 99 UFC or something? UFC 46. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> I, I knew it would be double v, digits. I think Vitor but... was at UFC 12. Right. I think he's fighting on the same card as Mark Coleman, which was uh, which is actually the next uh, Mark worst Coleman? champion. Yeah. Just yeah. had the belt once, and then uh, Pete Williams kicked him right in the face, and that was it. Yeah, but he's but he's a Hall of Famer. I mean, I'll, God, there's guys I'll, I will respect him just simply because of the impact they have. Yeah, I guess uh, that doesn't make him any less a uh, bad champ, though. Yeah, uh, Johnny Hendricks on the list. That's not oh, a shock. Oh my God! Yeah, but did you hear that uh, he has switched uh, Jackson Wink training yeah. in Albuquerque now? Yeah, I know. I uh, caught uh, Donald Cerrone's uh, Instagram. Uh, he shot a video and had uh, Johnny Hendricks are out out there helping him at the BMF Ranch. Oh, shit. Uh, digging posts and stuff. That's because, right. Uh, no, that's I'm not right. here to train to be a fire. I'm here to train to be a cowboy, son. <laughs> uh, let's see. <laughs> Coming up, Luke Rockhold. Makes sense. Really not a whole lot of words required for that guy. Ooh, shit. Anthony Pettis on the list. Anthony Pettis should be on the list. I, um, I, I agree. Um, bec- look, he had a couple of defenses. Notably, I mean, the... Uh, um, Man, not Mendez, uh, uh, Melendez, Melendez, um, was really kind of, that was his peak as champ because he turned right around and got clocked and he was, he was done yeah. after that. Uh, next on the list, Conor McGregor. He should I, be. I, I that agree. Guy, that guy I, I has got to agree. defend anything. He's never defended one thing. He should be at the top of the list. Yeah, I can't, I can't argue with that. Step aside, Holy Holm. <laughs> C-Mac, go to go in the top of the list. <laughs> Followed by Michael Bisming. Well, that, that one's that that one's still up for debate. Yeah, and apparently the worst one ever, Jermaine Durand to me. Oh, my <laughs> well, God. because she's well, the only one. She's like, here, you can have your belt back. Um, I'm just gonna fight at 135. Well, what happens then if like uh, Chris Cyborg Santos has to retire for some reason or whatever, like for man parts get too big? Or, I don't know. I mean, you know, I was thinking the same, same, same. I was like, same oh, Dick gets too big and can't fight no more. <laughs> no, no. But I mean, but honestly, if she, if she's not around, that one forty five division doesn't exist. Nope. It's basically and, like one thirty five when Ronda first started. And so, if Eight that becomes her. the case, and they wipe one forty five, if that becomes a wiped weight class, which it will when Cyborg stops fighting, unless yeah. God, unless somebody comes up and really kind of takes the world. But but I mean, I, I would pay to see Holly Holm and Cyborg go at it. But do you think that they uh, – oh, 
Man, I'd, well, pay, I'd pay money for that. She lost to Jermaine Duran to me, though. I know, but that was that fight was plagued with cheating supreme, hitting after the bell. She got rocked at one point, too. Yeah, a real Dutch fight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, which does, in fact, lead us to tomorrow's card, yeah. UFC 216. Yeah, let's get to it. Um, I mean, there's a lot on the prelims I don't care about. Hey, but here's the thing. Uh, my friend Don... Does he does for some reason he's got a thing against um, wanting to admit that you're right? But he told me in confidence, and I, but he didn't say, "Hey, don't tell him that." But I said this. But oh shit! Actually, you know what? He did say that. But here that's it right. Is. No, he got to tell me an app. <laughs> Fuck that. We're past that. No, he uh, he was going to admit that the prelims on the last fight, the last pay per view we had over here, two fifteen. Yeah. That that was legit good fighting. Because Don's a boxing guy, uh, so yeah. he doesn't want to admit when an MMA fight. I love how pissed off he was getting when every round that Mayweather-McGregor fight, and I was like, well, that's obviously McGregor's round. <laughs> <laughs> oh, give that one and to it, the Irishman. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, give Mayweather a nine. It's, that's nearly a 10-8 round, but, you know, that's obviously the Irishman's round. But, yeah, but uh, but yeah, so he had to admit that the uh, last fights that they were over for UFC Good. fight night were uh, that the prelims, but he would said it seemed like to him that the prelims were legit. And I said, well, it works out that way that's that's sometimes how pay-per-views go you know i mean your pay-per-view you card might sometimes you might be pulling your hair out thinking god dang it i just i spent 50 bucks for this yeah when but, I, when all the free shit was amazing yeah yeah totally it, it happens that way more often it than does. not i don't think it's gonna happen tomorrow no because the main card but and where i'm going with all this if you want to slap out there the uh, uh just throw out there the uh the prelims Fine. Yeah. Uh, I don't well, want to spend a lot of time on it. No, the names that uh, jump out, actually, the most of the big names are fighting on the Fight Pass prelims. Uh, Talos Latis fighting Brad Tavares, middleweight. Right. That'll be, Tell that'll us, be well, fun. Well, Talos is on the point of probably uh, having to probably retire yeah. before long. He's uh, been around a long time. Yeah. And John Moraga's fighting uh, against Magomed Bibul- Bibulatov. Bibulatov. Oh, wow. A rescue. Yeah. Well, yeah, obviously. <laughs> I yeah. didn't figure he was a South uh, South Pacific Islander. <laughs> He's from uh, Jersey. Uh, Mark Godbeer, the hand of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm picking him a heavyweight. Uh, and then you got, jumped to the FX card, where which used to have the Will Brooks-Nick uh, Lentz fight, which got pulled because Nick Lentz can't make 155, apparently. Right. Uh, n- Bobby Green, me and Bobby Green on there. Yeah. Kind of, He's it, on the prelims? He's on the prelims, yeah. Wow. Yeah, fighting lightweights against Lando Calrissian. No, not Calrissian, Venata. Right. <laughs> Bobby, uh, Green's, Bobby Green's a pretty good fighter. I'm shocked he's on the uh, on the prelims, yeah, which just, actually might really show exactly how good the uh, main card really is. Yeah, and then uh, your main event, Tom Duquesne fighting Cody Stamen. Stamen. Which, by the way, the first one of the ma- of the pay per view is always usually a throwaway. So that way, if something if something does go amiss. They bring up the uh, the main card on the uh, right. the, uh, the main event on the prelims. And so. uh, Bobby Green is actually riding a three fight losing streak. Oh well, maybe my knowledge is a little dated. Lost to Edson, lost to uh, Dustin Poirier, and lost to uh, Rashid Megamedov. Those are all good fighters, though, man. Yeah. Well, Poirier finished him. The other two were one was a split decision. The other one was unanimous against him. Um, main card: Beniel Dariush, Evan Dunham, open up action. Yeah, no, no. Dariush is. Uh, I, I think he did. He might have lost his last time out. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But that guy has been on a roll since he's and, been in the UFC. Yeah, and he will submit you. He lost to. Uh, uh, he got beat by Barbosa actually, flying knee, on the uh, Belfort Gastelum fight night card. Oh yeah, yeah. Edson is a dangerous dude. And he was also finished by Michael Chiesa. That was kind of when Chiesa's rise began when he fucking subbed. Oh, is, are subbed we talking Dariush. a few years ago? Uh, this was at uh, when Glover fought Rashad April of last year. Wow. Well, yeah. Well, that's – Kiesa, that, his whole game is ground. So, right. you know, but Dariush is a – Dariush that, is a black belt BJJ man. But he, but he's still uh, – God, his striking is actually okay. Yeah, he knocked out James Vick. Yeah. I mean, he's he's got good striking. He's got good ground. I mean, he's a really good utility all-around guy. Yeah. And he's he's a pretty pretty good veteran. I mean, he's fought in UFC since January. Beat Crook Shanks, beat Jim Miller, beat Michael Johnson, one fifty five. And it's okay to root for him, even though he's an Iranian, because well, that's right. His family had to flee Iran because they were Christians. So, uh, I'm I'm gonna go. I mean, I I dig Evan Dunham. I think he's gonna try to keep it standing for the whole fight. 
But I think Darius is going to take him down to tackle. Yeah, yeah, that's. that's uh, I, I think it'll be second round submission. Right. Uh, after that, uh, women's flyweight. These two ladies don't have a Wikipedia, so uh, Mara Romero Barella fighting Kalindra Faria. Okay, moving I'm on. I'm going with the lady with three names. I, 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 I you can't because it it rolls off the tongue like Mara Romero Barella. See, but it's the UFC <laughs> trying more shit of trying. Look, it's two fighters nobody's ever heard of, and they're looking at going, hey. Maybe, maybe they'll be able to pick up some fans, and then we can get to generate a little more interest. They're basically they, sacrificing they, a, yeah. a, f- a fight they could have made with a couple of people that are known, women or otherwise. I don't care. I'm not being an asshole. No, sure, but but they're they're utilizing it as a well, as they're, a test strip. Yeah, they're fill, they're filling that gap that Van Zant left, and you know, obviously I as well. But I don't know why they didn't keep her. No. Why didn't keep Jessica I in that? Well, because you, well, have you ever seen him make a short notice women's fight? That's a good point. It doesn't happen. No, it doesn't. Well, rarely they actually pull out, you know? I'm sure there's a joke in there. So there well, okay, is, there's well. about five right. jokes in there. <laughs> okay. Uh, heavyweight fight. Fabricio Verdum fighting Derek Lewis. Man, if this fight goes past two rounds, Derek loses chance. His chances of victory go down. I'd they say don't. after one round, but, I mean, Derek Lewis brings it. He brings everything he can in round one. Yeah. And Fabricio... I don't think he's got a glass chin. I'm not saying that, but I am saying that he has been cracked before. Yeah, and I don't think he's going to have to worry about chasing Derek Lewis. He's not going to do no. that. No. I think he learned from the Stebe fight. Don't <laughs> run and just punch people because they're going to punch you once and you're fucking done. Yeah. I, do you think the uh, winner of this fight, more importantly than the result, do you think the winner uh, gets Stebe? Agree. Oh, absolutely, because who else is up there? Mark Hunt's fighting in a couple couple weeks in, uh, in uh, fucking Australia. There's no one to challenge him right now that either hasn't just fought or is just not a worthy competitor. So this would set up probably about a March or April uh, heavyweight fight then. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, I'd like to see Tight Verdum fight. get a rematch against uh, Stipe, <laughs> try to get a little vengeance. I, I want to see Derek Lewis do something. Number one, because the guy... It'd be far more interesting to see Derek Lewis. That guy, um, I mean, he's a good human being. He doesn't really. He has not been putting it out there, but the media has. Yeah. That guy. He's a Houston resident. Right. Hurricane Harvey hit. That guy's down there running, running around his pickup, helping fucking fools out. Because and, and no one says really a whole lot about it. Well, you know, and and they, when they try to, he said, "No, no, let's talk about my fighting." I mean, he's a genuine. Right. Uh, 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 nobody more genuine than Derek Lewis in the entire UFC, and a stone cold killer at that. And he will call out. Call out wanting your woman. That's right. <laughs> After he beats Brown. your ass. That, <laughs> did that oh, with Travis God Brown. Damn, that was amazing. Did that with Travis Brown. Hey, where's that fine ass Ronda Rousey at? <laughs> oh shit! Get that guy a T-shirt. I'll buy it. Um, if it's uh, first round, I'm going Derek Lewis knockout in spectacular fashion. Oh yeah. If it goes more than ten minutes, I think Verdum is just going to ride out a decision victory on this one. Yeah, because I mean. Derek Lewis still got power, even when he's like breathing out of his mouth. But yeah. and Verdum has every every skill on the ground to finish. It. Yeah, Derek Lewis has no answers but Derek, on the ground. Yeah, Derek Lewis, because a lot of his success came from ground and pound after putting someone on their ass, chasing and finishing the fight. But but if you're wanting to take, but you have to take a big risk though if you're looking at trying to get yeah. a takedown on this guy that he doesn't clobber you upside the head with a yeah. one big right. Cain Velasquez was getting his ass beat, and I was like, I got to take him down. Fight was over right after that. And Get, Fabricio done. Yeah, yeah, Fabricio kind of he was able to stuff it into a sprawl and then right. go with the, uh, you know, basically with the uh, the guillotine. Yeah, I I think I, I want Derek Lewis to take it. The yeah. fan side of me wants him to win. Sure. Well, because he was going to retire. Yeah. The UFC begged him to come back. So yeah, after he lost that fight against uh, shit, I can't remember. But after he lost his uh, the last loss in his uh, career, he was done. He was like, I don't know. I think I think I'm good. Right, and then he just fucking rattles off knockout, knockout, knockout. You know. Yeah. So I'm I'm glad he stuck with it because I think it's going to finally pay off some dividends for him. Right. Co-main event of the evening, the only Fine. legitimate title fight on the card: Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson fighting Ray Borg, who's made weight at buck and a quarter, buck twenty four today. Yeah. Well, I think that's because Ray Borg knew that. Oh Matt- yeah, if he did it again, <laughs> you're fucked. You are done, He's sir. Done. He will probably not even get to drop down to Bellator. It, it's, <laughs> it's probably that reason that this fight is not the main event because of Ray Borg. Yeah, you know no, Mighty sure. Mouse. You know Mighty Mouse is going to make it there. Well, because we're going to see uh, potentially see UFC history tomorrow because the guy who's had the most title defenses in all of the UFC ever, Anderson Silva, eleven. 
Demetrius Johnson is at 11. Yeah. Are, 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 is it 10 or 11? Oh, well, does he tie I think, tomorrow I think or ele- I think 11 is uh, the magic number for him, which tomorrow will be his 11 for sure. I, I, because I yeah. didn't realize is moving to a tie with Anderson or, or own it outright. Uh, he's defended one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. He's defended ten times. So tomorrow would be a tied tie. Re- yeah, tied record when he uh, beat Reyes uh, with ten. Tomorrow, no, tomorrow is going to be be oh, history. Oh, so Anderson's 11, had ten. Eleven. Okay. Yeah, they both have ten. Eleven's the magic number. Okay. Well, there you go. Which you'll never see again. No. Unless Joanna does it. Yeah, but even then, I don't know. If people are catching up. She, with her. Yeah, she just wants to break Ronda's record. Yeah. Which that's that's a record you should want to break. Sure. Yeah, and, and Joanna can do it, and, and she probably will do it well, uh, against Rose Namajunas. But we'll talk about that in about a month. And keep an eye on Demetrius Johnson. He he'll get this one, and and mark my words, the UFC is going to start looking at trying to phase out the men's one twenty five. But yeah, just might have. But then you're going to have like a stacked bantamweight division. No, not really. The, you'll have, yeah, you, it'll be stacked. But there'll be a lot of fighters let go. Well, you have, well, you're not going to let go Cejudo right now. No. But I don't like him at 135. That's the I thing. Think, He's too small. I don't even like him at 125 if he has to fight Mighty Mouse. <laughs> I don't know. After that last fight, dude, I'm, I mean, I'm listening. I'm listening now. Yeah. And when he but, fights Sergio Pettis, that's going to be the test. Yeah. If he can do what he did in his last fight, Sergio Pettis, give that man a rematch. Give sure. him a title shot. Sure. Uh, as far as picks go, uh, Mighty Mouse is going to probably tap him second round. Yeah, I mean, at 125, you don't have a – I mean, we talk about it all the time. You don't have that inertia uh, for a lot of knockouts, although if somebody can, it's usually Mighty Mouse. But, yeah, but it's usually check Henry more, Cejudo fight right there. Yeah, but it's usually more from him being able to put it right on where it needs to be because he's probably one of the most accurate strikers in the UFC. Yeah. Oh, um, my but God, he, dude. He's, the pound, he's the man. He's yeah, the fucking man. His and his he ground gets game, no respect. His ground game is uh, – I, I can count really on one hand the times I've seen him on his back and in trouble. Tim <laughs> Elliott got him on his back. Yeah, and it, he wasn't looking too good, but that was just because Tim Elliott was just some random guy, right? That how do you prepare for that? Yeah, that was the only guy. Him and uh, Horiguchi had a had some pretty good success on him until he got tapped at four fifty nine in the fifth round, <laughs> which that's a record that'll never be broken, right? Uh, and then you got your main event, which we nearly lost due to Kevin Lee not being able to make weight. Your lightweight interim title fight: Tony El Kakui Ferguson fighting Kevin. Some stupid fucking Where's nickname like, Lee. Ga- ghetto gangster. Like, ghetto or superstar or something, something like that. Know, but the, the other guy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like um, Kevin Lee. I'm sorry. I, I, I hate his fucking attitude. I really do. Yeah. No, he does. He has. Uh, he, he, yeah. It, it's, he, he doesn't make it easy for you to like him. He's got great skills. Oh, I, no really, doubt. I really like his skills. As a matter of fact, in the run up to this, he's been doing nothing but progressing his, uh, advancing his skill. Now, a lot of that you can usually look at it and assume it's the camp, it's the trainer, whatever. The problem is he's never fought uh, El Kakui before. Right. I mean, Tony and Ferguson he hasn't fought is a, a fighter at that caliber. No. I mean, I think Kevin Lee has had a little bit of an easier route to get to where he's getting a title fight than a lot of people have. Right. I mean, the, his, okay, he lost to Ally Aquina back at UFC 169. I mean, he, he's been around for a while. You look at the names of people he's beaten. James Muntasri, that's a kind of a big one, back in February of 2015, or July of 2015. Well, he's no longer active, so yeah. yeah. Uh, beat Escudero, beat Jake Matthews, beat uh, Trinaldo, subbed him, finished him, and then beat Michael Chiesa in a pretty disputed yeah. you know, finish, which right. I understand, but that choke was in, and if it, he wasn't going to go out then, he was probably going to go out eventually. Sure. But, but the thing is, what... Tony Ferguson has done ever since Rumble Johnson retired. Really, my f- favorite go-to fighter is Edson Barboza. Tony Ferguson made Edson Barboza look silly. Yeah, and tapping him with that head and arm choke. Yeah, Darce choke. Yeah, I mean it was. Uh, it, it wasn't even. It, it was not a fun fight to watch if you're an Edson fan. No, nope. you know. But I mean, and that's and that's not even maybe the highest talent level that uh, that Ferguson has faced. No, this guy has fought Abel Trujillo, finished him. Man. Fought Gleason Tabot, finished Wolf. him. Fought Rafael Dos Anjos for 25 minutes and beat his ass in, in Mexico. Right. I mean, Josh Thompson, yep. Kakuno, he lost to Michael Johnson fucking five years ago. He hadn't lost since. Beat Eve Edwards. He, he has just beaten some top-tier people. He's beaten champions. 
Tony Ferguson's got a style that I'm I'm not really a big fan of. It those guys will look really awkward. Yeah, kind of. Like but they the throw a lot of forth. a lot of weird spinning stuff, and yeah, it, it looks like it's like it, they look like they're grasping at straws right until they connect with one of those weird shots and stun the shit out of somebody, and then they jump on them, and then either uh, either you know hammer fist it out or else or else slide in and choke them out. You know, right. and we've seen Tony Ferguson do that his whole career. And, I mean, he just got a brown belt in uh, 10th Planet BJJ. Does train under Eddie Bravo for his ground shit, which I'm always a fan of that. I'm not a fan of his conspiracy theories, but I'm a fan <laughs> of the good work he puts out on the mat. Right. Uh, so, this is, I mean, he doesn't want to go to the ground. Kevin Lee wants it to go to the ground probably immediately. Well, yeah, kind of. But, man, but you don't be careful what you wish for. Sure. Because Tony Ferguson is dangerous on the ground. I don't give a damn how great you think you are. Yeah. I mean, by the list of names of people you rattle off there, this guy has got some legit ground game to him. Tony Ferguson's been tested for the past five years by top-tier opponents. Kevin, Kevin Lee, Lee is not. Kevin Lee is not. Michael Chiesa was the biggest name he had fought at the time. I, I think he's just he's benefiting from uh, Habib not being able to make weight. Because this, right. be, this should be uh, – could be fighting fucking Tony. That's what it should be. But if you can't make 155, then you can't come out and play for the belt. Right. So well, you got- and this and this is going to set up uh, who fights Conor McGregor for the championship then. Uh, unless they just say fuck it, we're going with uh, the trilogy fight, which Tony yeah, Ferguson says if they do that, then they're just it's all fucking bullshit. Well, it, I mean, they, we know that the interim belts are bullshit. Yeah. No, uh, Conor McGregor has to get a title defense somewhere, and, and it might as well be the winner of this fight. I, I like I like Tony Ferguson. I really do. I do, too. I, I just think that he he looks awkward and looks really goofy at times. My God, he throws. Yeah. At 155, he uses, he uses his full extension to the best of his ability. And, and Kevin Lee apparently had a really bad weight cut. Came yeah. in a pound overweight, was able to make weight. They had, they had a, do the Daniel Cormier make weight move with the towel. That's right. Just let me tuck my dick in here. Let me uh, let me put my weight on this towel until it reads the right. Yeah, I I, I think Tony's gonna take him into deeper water. He's even threatened that. He's like, motherfucker, I'm gonna take you 25 minutes and beat shit out of you. Yeah, and Which he can do that. We, we've seen him do it. And he, Kevin Lee, I don't know with the ba- with what I assume is a bad weight cut. If he's gonna be able to have that that energy. First two rounds, he might look great, but that third round, he's gonna start to wilt. Yeah. Yeah, I got Ferguson by finish. I'm gonna say it's gonna be a late finish, and it's gonna be a great fight. But Kevin Lee's gonna tire, and he's gonna get knocked out. Yeah, I think that's, and that's what it is. I mean, Tony Ferguson is is the guy that will, he'll wear you out and sub you or knock you out. Well, that's two, right. You know, fucking ain't right. I'm all right with that. All right. Well, that's it for us. We got. Thank God you, damn, my friends, for over being with us way on this hour. hour edition, hour two, man, hour yeah. and two minutes. So, uh, nonetheless, though, th- uh, thanks for joining us on a really long one this time. But hey, we had a lot to say. That's right. Drinks, I'm picking Budweiser. Metal, I'm picking fucking Spirit of Drift. Yeah. And uh, MMA, I'm going Mighty Mouse because that's a sure fucking bet. Yeah, I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to get into what we're getting ready to open here in a moment, which would be the uh, classic Jack Daniels. Metal, oh, thank God. Metal, uh, metal. I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to go uh, Seven Dust this week. I don't fucking br- bring it back. And uh, MMA, I'm going uh, El Kakui. El Kakui. Tony Ferguson, all the way. Well, friends, thanks for hanging out with us for this uh, hour-long edition. We'll try to keep next week's down uh, down a little more. We just had a lot to say this week. Yeah, I, well, we got we got real deep on on the metal section. Yeah. So yeah, that's, and that's I think we had one of them another fifteen-minute mead sessions. Yeah, yeah, yep. Went went a little long this time around, but we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. But uh, do check out Spirit of Drift. Brandon yeah. had the right pick on that one. I you, just, t- you take anything away from uh, this podcast? Listen to that fucking album. Yeah. Listen to the songs on YouTube, and then once you're wowed by it, go buy it. Yeah, band camp. And it is uh, Spirit Adrift, Curse of Conception. God damn, we've been lucky lately. We've been really lucky with some really good fucking releases over the yeah. week. Yeah, absolutely. We're spoiled. We're spoiled rotten. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and uh, tan some uh, tall boys and uh, call it a weekend uh, or uh, call it a Friday here. We're going to go Joe. watch Bell Tour 184. Yeah, we're well, probably not that. <laughs> <laughs>